If you would, go and take your Bibles, like I said, and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. And we've been uh, dealing with the subject on Hebrews chapter 13 on how to live the Christian life. And this whole chapter has been wonderful, and it's um, not something you can get through quickly. <laughs> There's a lot here, and praise God for his word and the power of his word. But how they live the Christian life, that tonight's message is the Christian life of obedience and peace. The Christian life of obedience and peace. Being obedient to the Lord and enjoying the peace that we have because the Holy Spirit that resides within us has given us that peace. So we're going to read verse uh, 17 tonight as we get started. And the Bible says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. It says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch over your souls. We mentioned in verse 7 several weeks ago, about those that have the rule over us, we're talking about the pastor. It says, remember them, in verse 7, that have the rule over you. We talked about what that means to remember. It means to pray for our pastor. Amen? We're to pray for our pastor. When, when we're working out throughout our day, throughout our week, and a Pastor Greg comes into your mind, that means we're supposed to start praying for him. We should pray for our pastor. Because the Bible instructs us to do that. We're to pray without ceasing. <laughs> we're always to be in the attitude of prayer, talking to the Lord conversing with the Lord throughout our day, meditating on his word, speaking to the Lord, asking him to, to show us great and mighty things that we know not. Amen? And as we do that, we are to pray for our pastor. And um, as we begin tonight in verse 17, we are once again to consider our attitude toward our pastor. And what we think is as we are to obey them that have the rule over us. We're to be obedient to our pastor. We recall verse 7 as once again we are to remember, and here 10 verses later, we are now to obey and to submit. Obey and to submit. Now, obeying and submitting is something that the things that the flesh, the world, and the devil do not like, do not do. One thing that this world does not do, it does not obey, it does not submit. The devil does not submit. And the devil is actually anti Christ against all these things. And the devil, they, they, hate, they hate those things of obedience. As a matter of fact, the Bible calls the devil's gang the children of disobedience. We are not no longer the children of disobedience when we accept Christ as our Savior, which means we are to be the children of obedience. Amen? We are to obey the Word of God, obey what God has for us, obey our pastor. As he follows the Lord, as he follows the Lord, we are to follow him and be obedient to our pastor. In the Word that he teaches us, in the Word that he preaches to us, the true pastors are understanding and they're under shepherds who preach and teach the pure word, holy word of God. The pure, perfect, holy word of God. When we obey and submit to them, in reality, we are obeying and submitting to the Holy Spirit. When we obey and submit to our pastor and to those that teach us the word of God in the church, we are in reality we're obeying and submitting to the Holy Spirit. Because these men have been appointed and anointed by the Holy Spirit of God, to do exactly that, to preach God's word to us, to teach God's word to us. They've been appointed and anointed by the Holy Spirit of God to do that. Acts chapter 20, verses 28. Let's read about that. Acts chapter 20. Verse 28. Actually, I'll be reading down to verse 31. This is one of those sections of Scripture you just can't read this one verse. You can only read the following. Concerning pastors and the Holy Spirit calling of a pastor, it says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul is saying through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he was warned to people. We are, we are, we are to take heed therefore unto ourselves and to, and to all the flock 
the pastor is to feed the flock, which the Holy Ghost hath made him the overseer of this local New Testament church. We are to follow that. We are to follow the Holy Spirit. We are to be obedient. And we see Paul's warning and how he urged the people in this church. In Acts, he says, there are going to be grievous wolves that will enter in, not sparing the flock. He knew that was going to come. That was going to happen. And you see that happen in churches. Grievous wolves enter in, not sparing the flock and, and going against the leadership of the church and, and, and what God has ordained there, the pastor of that church. And the Holy Word, the Holy God, God's Holy Word tells us all about these things. To be ready, to be prepared, to be on guard. And we're on guard by being obedient to the Holy Spirit, to God's Word. By encouraging and praying for our pastor and for those in leadership positions here those who head up ministries at our church. We are to pray for them. Pray for one another. Amen? Because the devil's on the prowl. And you can guarantee he's getting worse and worse as the day gets closer and closer to the rapture. No man knows the day or the hour. But the devil's been chomping at the bit for a long time. Amen? For 2,000 years. And the only thing that's been withholding him from doing his plan, as I said before, is the church. God's used the church to resist the devil and from keeping him in check until God does his work through the church, the local assembly, to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, to tell people that there's hope, let them know that there's salvation only in the name of Jesus Christ. But neither is there salvation in any other, the Bible says, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We have that wonderful name of Jesus. We name the name of Christ. It says that let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity and live a holy life, and, and be obedient to God's word. Letting people know about Jesus Christ and what he's done for me, the salvation that he's given me, the blood that he shed for me, and to let others know. Let them know about what Jesus Christ has done for the world, because God loves this world. And true pastors are appointed by the Holy Spirit, as we read here in Acts. Verse 17, the last part of verse 17 says, For they watch for your souls, as they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. It says they must, they watch for your souls. They, te- they keep guard. To watch means to guard. And God's given the pastor of our church and a responsibility to guard, to watch out for the souls of the, 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 the people that God brings here. We need to pray for our pastor, amen? If we're to be the people God desires for us to be, We need to be obedient and pray for what God tells us to be obedient and who to pray for. Amen. I like what John Phillips had to say on this scripture. He said, the rule of the pastor must be acknowledged. Amen. The responsibility of the pastor must be recognized too. The rule of the pastor must be acknowledged and honored, but his responsibility, his responsibility must be recognized also. And the responsibility God has placed on all of us in here tonight. All of us have that responsibility to win the souls to Jesus Christ. All of us in here. No one is exempt. You don't reach a certain age and retire. Amen? <laughs> You're not too young. If you can speak and you know the scripture, we are to be an example. We are to, we are to tell people about Jesus Christ. And there's no excuse for me or for anybody not to do that. Not to be obedient. The local New Testament Baptist Church is not a democracy where the majority rules. It's not the way the church works. Uh, It's not an anarchy where the or anarchy where the the, um, men can do whatever they want to do, or at their own will they can they can just do whatever whatever pleases them. But it is a theocracy over which God rules through the pastors of our local church. God rules these pastors, men gifted and appointed by God by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We all come together. We all fit together. It's not just a, a bunch of people that are about to be together by chance. God has called everyone here that's here tonight. God has you here for a purpose and for a reason. Amen? It's not just a chance. It's not just you decide to go to Southwest Baptist Church on Wednesday night. No, you're here for a reason. We're here for a reason. The Word of God declares that reason over and over again. So, for in order for the Christian to live the Christian life, though it's pleasing to God, we need to be obedient. God, help us to be obedient. 
But the Lord is satisfied with a servant who serves. Amen. Jesus Christ himself came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. We are to do the same. We are not to be ministered unto, but to minister, to serve others, to serve those around us. The true Christian or the believer is willing and anxious to be in the subjection to the word of God. To submit ourselves unto God's word and to what God's word directs and says for us to do. We need to be willing and anxious to do that as God's people. You know, um, we need to love what the pastor does in his teaching. We need to love the pastor's preaching and his teaching and the teaching of our teachers here at Southwest Baptist Church. We need to love that. <laughs> Talk about it. You know, so many people are happy just to listen to some preacher on the, on the internet or on YouTube and, and talk about that instead of their own pastor. I think that's wrong. We're missing, we're missing a lot that God has for us if we do that. Now, I love preaching. I love listening to preaching. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have a pastor. We need to listen to him first, amen? And do what God has called him to do, to follow the vision God has given him for, this, for, for Brunswick. And we do that through prayer once again and through, through obey, obedience. And we're not to listen to anybody else, amen? You know, most of the men I listen to are preachers, they're already gone to heaven. <laughs> most of the other men I must listen to outside of pastor, they're already in heaven right now. They're up there preaching, amen? <laughs> and uh, I think that's a kind of a good rule, <laughs> you know? But it, it's own, your own conviction, what God has lead you to do concerning that. But I'm just saying, today churches are not loyal it seems to me. And a given whim, there people want to separate, they want to split, and they want to turn their back on people. That's not what God has called us to, amen? He's not called us to that. We're to be one, as Jesus and his Father are one. We are to have a, a desire to, to be in one accord, to work together, to pray for each other, to love one another, and to serve God together and see what God will do. When we do that, when we're in one accord and the rest of the world has fallen apart, we shine brighter for the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you get a bunch of lights together, it gets even brighter, amen? <laughs> you know, we need to do that. God help us. God help us to do that. That's what he's called us to. And uh, we've got to turn the page here, amen? So verses 18 through 19, let's read. Verses 18 through 19. The word of God says, but I beseech you, the rather, I'm sorry, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. But I beseech you, the rather, to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. He's saying to pray for us once again. Pray for us. Pray for our pastor. We pray for our pastor, but do we pray for one another? Once again, I know this happens to me, and I'm sure it happens to you. You'll think about people in our church family as, the day, as we go out throughout the day. And I hope it's not ill thoughts, amen? I hope it's not something negative. <laughs> well, I wonder what they were thinking and why they looked at me that way or why they did that or why didn't they shake my hand or, you know what I'm saying? All that evil surmising, that's what gets things on the wrong track, amen? But when we think about somebody, a brother and sister in Christ, that's the Lord telling us to pray for them. Just pray for them. Start praying. Pray for our church family. That's what we're here for. Pray for one another. He says here, pray for, pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience. A lot of times, I'll tell someone that I'm praying for them. But I also ask them to pray for me. You know, if you go to somebody and you know that they're going through trouble, or you just, God lays it out in your heart to go to let them know that you're praying for them that you're remembering them throughout the day. You want to pray for them. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to know no details. Just that God has placed you on my heart, brother or sister. I'm going to pray for you today. You know what that does to a Christian? You ever have somebody come up to you and say that? Isn't that wonderful? Hey, listen, I was thinking about you today. I just want to let you know I'm praying for you and your wife. I'm praying for your, your son. You know, when somebody says that, it's just so encouraging to know that they care. They really care. And they're praying for you. And that's the best thing in the world to have somebody praying for you. None of us would be here tonight if it wasn't for the prayers of somebody. None of us would know Christ as Savior, I believe, if it wasn't for the prayers of somebody. Somebody was praying for me. It was my dad, 
my mom, when I accepted Christ as my Savior, and you too, whoever it was, somebody was praying for you. God help us to do the same, just to pray for one another. And many of you know that I was able to go down to West Virginia. I'm here Sunday night after Sunday morning after church, I left and and um, went and loaded my brother up and moved him down to West Virginia, down to Marmette. And it was a great time. I, lo I love it down there. I love it up here. But it was great going down there. It was great being with my brother. You know, outside of my wife, my son, my brother is my closest friend. You know, we've known each other our whole life. We've grown up together. We, we did a lot of fun things together. I was telling, um, I forget who I was, I was talking to back in the back here about some of the uh, experiences me and my brother had on four-wheelers. and Well, actually, it was three-wheelers back in the day. And they weren't good. <laughs> and we're a result of a miracle that we're still alive. But, uh, you know, they don't have three-wheelers no more, so that's, you know, that's, that's good, right? But anyhow, I was, we was talking about all these times, me and my brother, and we, as we were driving down to West Virginia, we just had a good time together. It was good to see him. And we woke up the early the next morning, and we went out to some of the old places. We went to our old school, the old Christian school, Calvary Baptist Academy down there in uh, Taze Valley, Hurricane, West Virginia, in that area. And we drove down, and everything was different. It was all different. It's like, this is not even the same. They don't even have the same curriculum there. We, we actually rode down by the school, and then we're in, we're in the church truck. <laughs> so that was a good thing. And um, the pastor of the church come out. I didn't know he was the pastor. And he goes, hi, how you doing? And, you know, he we wanted to talk to us. And so I talked to him. Oh, you're the pastor. Well, that's very nice to meet you. And this is my, me and my brother. We used to go to school here years ago, about 30, 32 years ago. And we just were just looking back and having some just memories of what God did the friends that we had in that Christian school. I'm going to see them all again in heaven one day. But it was a wonderful time. So it was good to be with my brother to remember those things that God has done. Remember this, remember that. Remember sneaking around the girls and putting a, um, one of those, what do you call those things, you blow a dandelion? We'd sneak around the girl and they wouldn't pay attention. We'd put it in their mouth while they were talking, you know? <laughs> we thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And they liked it, I guess, because they didn't, and we'd run, and we'd, we'd talk about, we'd used to do that, and, you know, just other things, just to annoy the girls, I guess. And um, we had a lot of fun. We had a good time just sitting there talking, so I guess the pastor got worried. We are out here sitting in the truck talking, you know, and it's the first day of school on Monday, you know. So um, anyhow, we talked to him, and come to find out a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed. They're not the same. You know, we need to stay hot for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't need to compromise. Amen. Stay hot for the Lord. Remember like it was the, the, the days, what, the way it used to be. You know, I'm not saying focus on the past or live in the past. I'm just saying, you know, we need to get back to where we were before. <laughs> Amen. Our country, there's hope for America. We just need to, we need to be about our father's business and be obedient. That's what we need to do. It's our responsibility. We've been given a lot. And there's a lot to be required of me of us tonight. And God's given me good memories. I'm just saying that tonight with my brother. And um, I talked to my dad's mechanic. Me and my brother were down there, and we were, um, mom had to go for chemotherapy treatments. So dad took her and me and my brother stayed around. We loaded up some things that needed to be loaded up. And dad's mechanic stopped by his house to get some oil that he left there. And his name was Bill. And I said, hi, Bill, my name is Matthew, this is my brother Mark. And he goes, oh, you're Tom's sons, okay. And um, I start talking about the Lord. He goes, listen, I just want to let you know, I don't believe in God. I was going to stop you right in your tracks. I don't believe in all that stuff. I believe, you know, this earth is millions of years old. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, and he just kept on going. So I just let him talk, you know, let him finish his story. <laughs> and then I said, okay, I just want to let you know, you know, that um, when you leave, I'm going to be praying for you. And he said, well, I guess I can't stop you from doing that. I said, no, sir, you can't. I didn't say that, but so I'm thinking. And I'm thinking, you just wait till my dad gets a hold of you again. Amen. <laughs> but I know my dad's been talking to him. And um, that's what I'm, I'm just talking about, being obedient. And my brother was there. He was able to witness that and see that together, which brought back some more old memories. And God is so good. God help us. God help us to be obedient. We're missing out if we're not obedient to God. We're missing out if we're not faithful. 
we're missing out. Tonight, if you would not have been here, you would have been missing out on a lot of things. A lot of things that God has for us. And the joy of obedience. So in verse 18, we read about a good conscience. It says here, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience. A good conscience. Do you have a good one tonight? Personal question. How's your conscience? We know we're supposed to examine ourselves on a daily basis, amen? That keeps us having a good conscience, a good close relationship to the Lord. Not allowing anything to creep in, to cause division. Because sin affects those around us more than it affects us. The more I realize that, the more I realize we need to hate sin. Hate it. Excuse that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Hate it. Be obedient. Hate sin. Because it's destroying our family. It's destroying our spouse. My sin affects, I know this is true, but my sin would affect my son and my wife more than it affects me. When I allow sin into my life, and I allow things in my life that should not be there, I'm hurting my, my family. And not only my family, I'm hurting my church family. God, help us to be obedient. Would God tell us to do something we couldn't do? No, he wouldn't. We can do all things through Christ. Amen? He wouldn't tell us to do these things if we could not do them, or he wouldn't be good. But we trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? In the power of his might. Trusting in him. So we are ready to have a good conscience. Let's be willing to live honestly, amen? Or let's desire to honor God with our whole life. Let's be willing. It says, willing to live honestly. Let's have a desire to honor God, not with just part of our lives, not just with part of our week, not just on Mondays and Wednesdays, but every day, honor God with our whole life. Honor God with everything because it's affecting those around us, amen? You know, there's an old song back in the 80s that says it only takes a spark to get a fire going. It used to be a big thing in, in, amongst younger teenagers who were older than me back in those days, you know. But it only takes a spark. It does, really. It just takes a spark of a couple of Christian families, a married couple, to love God together and to let people see it through their service to the Lord and let our kids see it. Our church family sees it. That is what it's all about, amen? Serving God together. Us men being the men of our homes, the way we're supposed to be, and the leader of our home is the way we're supposed to, and, and directing our family to serve and to love one another and to serve our church family together. Then we'll see things happen. We see, we see them happening here already, amen? God is so good. To be, it's so wonderful to be a part of Southwest Baptist Church. And I can't say that enough. God has given us something special here. And it's time that I start realizing it more. Amen? I can only speak for myself. Revival's personal. It's got to start with each one of us personally to get that spark to see what God's going to do and what he can do to this, this country, this state, this, this city if we just obedient to him. Let's be willing to live honestly. Let's be willing to be responsible to the Lord and to those around us, to our family, to our church family, to our pastor. Let's be responsible. You know, and it can start right now and all of us can get do something better, amen? I'm, I'm talking about myself first. I can do better. I'm telling you tonight, tonight I can do better. Can, can you do better? We can all do better, can't we? We can do better. Let's do better. Let's do it together, amen? So, if we do these things there in verses 20 and 21, verses 20 and 21 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, good work, good work to do his will, working in you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ in whom we glory forever, who to be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Excuse me for misreading that make you perfect in every good work to do his will. You know, we're being perfected. Amen? We are perfect. Our salvation is perfect, but God is doing a work. He's completing a work in you and me, in our families tonight. He's, he's doing a wonderful work. Now's not the time to give up. Amen? <laughs> Now's not the time to throw our hands in the air and 
Now's the time just to work even harder for the Lord, to pray even harder, to seek him all the more. All the more. As we obey and honor God, we have peace. As we obey and honor God, we have that peace that passes all understanding. You know, we have that encouragement within each and every family. We have that encouragement. The, the husband is encouraging the wife. The wife is encouraging the husband. The children are encouraging their parents. And the parents are encouraging their children with a little text or with just anything just throughout the day. Just letting your family know you love them as you're thinking about them. And that you're happy that God has given you the family that you got. Amen. Because Jesus is risen from the dead. This is why we can have peace. That we obey and honor God. We have peace and why? It's because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Amen. He is not dead. We serve a living Savior. He's alive. He is risen. We have peace because he is risen. We have peace because he is the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He, he gives us life for the sheep. He loves the sheep. He loves us. We have peace because he's the great shepherd. We have peace because of his blood has given all those who believe in him everlasting life, everlasting peace, everlasting joy, everlasting love. We have peace because of that. We have so much to be thankful for, so much to praise God for tonight. Let's praise him together, amen? Let's praise him together now. Let's be obedient and let's enjoy the peace. And use that peace, by the way, God has given us. You know, the world sees that. The world sees the peace. And I'm not talking about lifestyle evangelism. We're supposed to speak the word. The Bible is clear about that. But we're supposed to live it also. Speak and live it. Walk the walk, amen? <laughs> talk the talk. People see the peace that you have when all these things are going on and how your family's functional, <laughs> amen? And they see it. And you know, it has an impact on people around you. They, they, they see what God is doing. They see the power of God in your life, and not just your life, but your family. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Let's be a difference in this world tonight, amen? This is the midweek service. We praise God for the midweek service. We gather together. The whole idea of this is to, is to pray, the prayer meeting. Let's pray for one another tonight. Let's pray for our families tonight. And let's... let's Make the decision to be obedient and enjoy the peace that God has for us through that obedience. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's do that tonight. Every head pod, every eye closed.